you know, the famous person thing is a little bit, uh, obviously, yeah, it's a double-edged sword. Um, people, they even made a video making fun of us for using famous people. Um, and, uh, um, but the fact of the matter is, um, with some exceptions, uh, you know, they, people will not click on it <laughs> if it doesn't have one. Uh, so there's really, it's, it's a, a necessary, it's not evil, but it is a necessity. Um, and uh, if they're articulate and, you know, and making themselves useful and or funny and or Tom Lank. Um, <laughs> uh, but by the way, he went for about 40 minutes. Everybody else stuck to the script. We have some amazing Tom Lank footage. <laughs> Literally went off about 30 seconds on why Deborah Messing gets a show every year. Just, <laughs> just, uh, not sure. He's, he, he's an amazing man. Um, but um, uh, it's, it's their useful, being able to tell stories, being able to, you know, the people I brought in, uh, a lot of them work, have worked in campaigns, but they've also worked in sketch comedy, so they know how to put together a crew really fast. And, and so I have all this good stuff at my disposal. The downside is always, if you want to be a storyteller, uh, the best thing in the world you can do is never say anything outside of that. Never be political. Uh, because as soon as you're political, um, even the people who agree with you are going to judge what you make through that barometer. They're going to use that as a sort of litmus test. Is this really feminist? Or is this really you know, what this guy is about? And do you want a story to talk to people without you in the conversation. So it's, this is not what I would do as a career move. Um, I made a folk album, uh, which is possibly, thank you, the only worse idea for a career <laughs> than political ads. Um, you, the other, obviously, uh, one of the rules of Super PAC is we cannot um, make any profit of any kind on these. And I, oddly enough, I think that's a rule in folk too. So. <laughs>In terms of storytelling, my stories have always been uh, about personal, the, per the politics of the personal. It's basically, um, you know, what do you do in this situation um, and how hard is it to be in this situation? Some people look at them and go, well, this is quite a libertarian text um, or this is quite, well, this, you know, I, but I'm never, almost never setting out to say I need to make a political statement. That's not, that's not what wakes you up in the morning. That's not what gets you into your room into your study. Um, I just want to, you know, I just want to tell stories about adolescent girls with superpowers, now leave me alone. <laughs> but um, I've had so many people come up to me and say stories about adolescent super girls, um, adolescent girls with superpowers um, changed my life. I've had, uh, somebody came up to me yesterday and said the best thing for me, because it wasn't something I was experiencing, was that the men in Buffy respected her, never questioned the idea that she was in charge, and were not only approving, but somewhat turned on by it. Um, and that was, the, that was deliberate. Uh, but uh, um, that, I mean, the stories we tell are where the gray areas get to exist, and should. And um, for me, the story is always, this is almost unbearably difficult, um, but, uh, but, you know, we, we do power through it. And uh, that alone has, has changed some people's dialogue. Um, and so that's what I'll just, I'll just keep trying to do that. Or, you know, movies where everybody, the whole world dies. Just the whole world. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes you have a bad day and then you make Cabin in the Woods. You have to touch, talk to somebody's personal experience and hopefully in a way that they don't even realize they're being talked to. This is where you can't make an argument. You can only sort of give somebody an emotion that they connect to because the only way we start or maintain a conversation is through connection. And I know that there are many people who are supporting Donald Trump who are decent, frightened, angry people that he has struck a nerve with and that it's not it's not that half the country sucks. It's that, you know, we latch on to things, be out of need. There is, 
it is fair to say that there are problems with the American government. I think that they come from the very party that spawned a Donald Trump, but the fact is um, people do want something that they can really get behind. And sometimes they would like not to be told that they can do everything because it's hard to do everything. If you don't have a system in place where you already get everything, if you're not, um, you know, uh, a straight white man of, who has got lots and lots of money, um, God's great. <laughs> Straight-ish. Anyway, um, uh, but um, uh, you know, sometimes it's it's easier to say, "This is the life I have. This is as good as it can be. Therefore, it's as good as it should be." And sometimes I don't want to make a choice. I want somebody else to make that choice for me. That is not something about women. That's something about all of us. It's part of how dictators come into power. So once this election is over with, what happens? Do you go back to just making stories or just making stories? Um, I know, it's God, stars. it's like you've done nothing. Stars <laughs> are dumb. Um, that was not an impression of you, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, yes, I was in the middle of a screenplay that I'm enormously passionate about. And I had planned to finish a couple months ago and then realized that I was just going to put it in a drawer. Not really. We don't have drawers anymore. I was going to put it in a file um, uh, until November 9th. Well, 10th, November 9th, I'm going to be very hungover. <laughs> Hopefully for the good reason.